Hey, this is Chris for ESC Cars, reporting from Madrid, and I'm here with Laura Risotto for Latvia. Hey, Laura, how are you liking Madrid so far? I love it here. I love Spain. Me gusta mucho de España. It's a beautiful place, and I'm so glad we get to be here for this. Yeah, I think the city got a really nice vibe to it, doesn't it? Like it's, um, and it's also part of the Eurovision experience. It's not just Lisbon, but you're getting to see all these places. You've been to other parties, like yeah, I've been to. I went to Israel. I went to Amsterdam. Um, the Riga party. We were the host for the Riga party because I'm representing Latvia. That's the capital of Latvia. Um, what else? Yeah, I think, and I think this is the last one. Um, but it's been so much fun. It's good that we get to interact with so many different cultures and meet people from here. And And it's like we talk so much on I speak on social media a lot with um, people and then to meet them in person when you go to their country it's so special so it's great so you've spent a lot of time on planes recently what a kind of plane traveler are you train what kind oh I'm the sleeper I as, <laughs> yeah as soon as I get on a plane that's the first thing I do I put on like Gilmore girls on Netflix I download them and then I just put on the train no matter what happens I sleep because the idea of being in a small space for so long I can't I can't I'm too hyperactive so I either go crazy or I sleep <laughs> okay yeah, I was wondering because you were before the Latvian national final you were in the US and you came for for the Latvian national final then to Latvia mm -hmm. then you get, went back to the US and now all the parties so you're almost all the time at the planes I know my life is in a suitcase it's so weird <laughs> but I love it I wouldn't change it for the world and I actually took the train here because I was in Lisbon shooting the postcard and that was wonderful actually because it's overnight and they have beds so you can just sleep it off so I feel brand new today which is such a relief I heard your song for the first time in January mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine from Iceland actually sent me this this YouTube link and said hey check out this is a funny girl song in Latvia this is gonna go to Eurovision this year and and I clicked on the link and I said he's absolutely right and, and now we're here yeah. and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm a huge fan I've been a huge fan of your song from from the get-go Something I wanted to ask you is, um, recently I've seen you in some kind of skirt with feminist... Yes! Feminist yes, 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 I wore it in Israel. Yes, I have a skirt that says feminist all over it. I'm so excited to finally get to wear it. Yeah. Is there something you want to talk a little bit more about fe feminism in general? Because, I mean, if you look at your song, I don't think it's... A it's not that... It's not a typical feminist song, isn't it? Like mm, it depends. I think that the, the, of course, that the funny girl story is a girl that got friend zoned because she was so afraid of getting rejected and telling the guy she loved how she actually felt that she didn't make a move and then it was too late. She became just the, the, the funny girl, the girl who made him laugh, his friend. And my message with the song is, don't let that happen to you. If you feel that way about someone and you care about them and you want to tell them how you feel, just go for it. It doesn't matter if you're a boy, if you're a girl. I feel like a lot of girls feel like they grew up thinking that the guy has to make the first move and that they have to pretend they don't feel a way about so about a certain way about someone because they need to protect themselves and you know what then take initiative girl you do it you know I'm all about girl power and equality really yeah. so yeah yeah and I think the way you take control of the stage is also a message that I mean we don't we don't have that that often that you you're really you're really taking making the most out of your three minutes and um, something something people have been arguing that your your song doesn't have a typical Eurovision climax like there's no <laughs> big note there's no key change so it's a bit of a risk to go that route and do the thing that you're you're doing but it, what was the thought process behind that like did you <laughs> deliberately choose not to do typical Eurovision ballads I mean I didn't write this song for Eurovision I had I saw a new story about Supernova because I was doing research to travel to Latvia and I just bumped into a story for it and I was like well you know what maybe I should sign up I knew Eurovision already of course but I was like well what song should I submit I was like yeah I believe in the song the song I wrote by myself I was like it's gonna be special and you know and if it is chosen Eurovision is going to be in Lisbon and I speak Portuguese I have Portuguese descent on my mother's side and I'm Brazilian and representing Latvia and Portugal would be crazy but I didn't write it thinking about that particular stage it's just a song that I as an artist was ready to release and I'm just glad it got chosen and I, I guess we'll see really what happens on the day do you think your Portuguese gives you an advantage in Lisbon because you're kind of not lost in in the hotel and everything you can talk to people and true I mean oh, I, I don't know I guess we'll find out I hope so when I, I 
I was in Lisbon just now shooting the postcard. We went to Algarve, which is a region there with beautiful beaches, like, oh my God. And then I think the dynamic with the crew was awesome too, because we all speak the same language. And then um, Portugal colonized Brazil, which is where I grew up. And then to be able to have it, there's just a connection there that's really nice. And um, I guess we'll see, but I'm excited to be able to spend two weeks in Portugal, because that's how long we're going to be there for and just connect with the Portuguese crowd because they're so nice. They're just amazing hosts and so sweet. Yeah, I think you can engage with the arena crowd maybe a bit even more than others and that could give you an advantage. Are there any events planned for the two weeks? Like is there a Latvian reception party or some sort? Mm, I'm not sure what the exact schedule is like because I know they're still closing a few things for performances and stuff like that. But you know, stay tuned to my social media. It'll all be up there on Insta and Facebook and Twitter and stuff. <laughs> Okay, I think we should wrap it up. Thank you very much for taking the time talking to us. Imagine, thank you. And thank you for your friend for sending you. The yes, that's... Uh, I you rock friend. <laughs> exactly. Greetings to Iceland. Um. Yes, yes. thank you, Iceland. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. And I will see you in Lisbon. And yes, of course. Looking very much forward to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys.